I'm Jeff Fritz with Soundstage.com, and I'm joined today by Rune Skov. He is the sales director of Griffin Audio Designs. Rune, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff, for having me here. It's a pleasure. Well, as well. I, I really appreciate you being here, and we have some big news coming out of Denmark, and we want to talk about that today. And just to let the cat out of the bag, for those of you that don't know, Griffin Audio Designs has launched its flagship stereo and mono power amplifiers and preamplifier, the Apex Stereo, the Apex Mono, and the Commander preamplifier. And these are the flagship, The and when I say flagship, when you see these things for the first time, you will understand the scale that, that Griffin has undertaken with these products. But before we get into that, Rune, I want to talk a little bit about the history of Griffin and Class A, because... Yeah. It goes way back many decades, and I've been in the industry myself for about 25 years. And I, I remember, I remember early on when I first learned of Griffin Class A amplifiers, um, and I believe the original models were the Reference One monos That's uh, true. that you that you guys produced. And then after that, it was the DM100 stereo amplifier, and the DM100 became the original Antillian. Uh, yes. After the Antillian, we had the Antillian Signature. Uh, I believe in the timeline, uh, next came the Coliseum. That's correct. And Jeff. then the uh, the Antil and then the Mephisto, and then the Antillian Evo. And in all of, just so everybody is aware, and finally, also the Essence. Don't and, and the and the, the Essence, essence. the yeah. Essence, which is the newest. The newest Griffin amplifier up up till today, uh, yeah. but ju and just so everyone is aware, when Griffin releases power amplifiers, there is a stereo and a mono variant of each model. So whenever we talk about you know an Antillian Evo, there is a stereo and a mono version, and that brings us up until today. Um, and 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 Rune, I would like for you to break the news uh, in a more official capacity. Just tell us. Yeah. Tell us about the launch of the new Griffin products today. Yes, yes. Like you, like you mentioned in the beginning, that today we are launching uh, the biggest projects ever made by Griffin. It is the Apex Stereo and the Apex Mono Power Amplifiers, but also the Commander Preamp. Um, and I think we have just taken the, the technology and topology that we are used to working with uh, to, to the next the next level, you know, a, a, a lot of other companies or the industry says, oh, we should go in the different direction. It should be small and it should be convenient and one box solution and so on. But with the Apex, I think we have just taken a whole different approach. It's like when you see Koenigsegg from the car industry or Lamborghini or one of the other major uh, luxury car manufacturers that People there talking about, you know, we should not make that powerful engines and so on. Uh, we should downscale everything. Uh, and, and I think we have taken the same approach that we are actually topping up on everything uh, for the Apex and the Commander and especially the Apex. It's uh, almost twice as heavy as a Mephisto. And everyone who's been handling a Mephisto knows it's a big beast. <laughs> um, Absolutely, uh, but but here we are talking about a stereo amplifier at four hundred and fifty pounds, um, and two hundred and ten watts pu pure class A in eight ohms uh, for the stereo version, and uh, more than one farad power capacity. So now we are into the farads and not just micro farads, um, right? <laughs> for the first time ever. Uh, which is, you know, it's it's just uh, it's mind blowing what it does to have that uh, kind of talk to an amplifier. And and you know, it is it is amazing. You know, I reviewed I've reviewed every stereo amplifier, I think that Griffin has ever made. It's amazing. You know, the the the, the Mephisto was, if I'm not mistaken, 238 pounds. At 450 pounds the apex is mind-blowingly large you know i haven't seen it in person but i've seen the photos 
But what's amazing about it to me is I also think, and you know, not to spend too much time on this, but you guys with the Apex and, and the Commander have really taken the industrial design to a new level as well. I, I, I think that the Apex, as large as it is, it is a beautiful amplifier. The, the, the curvature of the exterior of the heat sink, it's elegant as well as brutally large. And so I think you you guys have accomplished something uh, in terms of that, that perhaps you, you, you know, kind of takes Griffin to the next level of industrial design as well. Well, tell us a little bit about the development. I think you mentioned that um, it's been about a two and a half year project. Um, yes, yes. What, 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 take us behind the scenes in the development of the Apex and the Commander. Uh, yeah, first of all, you know, we, we decided to do something very 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 big and it was kind of saying okay this is a cost no object let's make it as good as possible that we are capable of doing and and having tom muller our head of engineering in-house been doing all the electronic designs now for 20 years you know um, and knowing what he's capable of and actually taking that even further uh, I think that has been a massive task for him and a huge, um, what should I say, um, um, for, for Tom it has been a, a an incredible experience stepping into this, saying okay you got, there are zero boundaries, zero limits, just do what you think is the best and uh, the best possible design you can do. Um, and then go from there. Uh, the exterior design was done by, by our founder Fleming uh, Rasmussen, who's been doing most of the designs for Griffin uh, for, yeah, for, since the very beginning. Um, but that was the exterior, but we needed something inside. And, <laughs> right. and, and of course what Tom has been learning over the years from working with the, the, the Antillian, the Evo, um, the Colosseum, the Mephisto essence and so on. Um, I think he has come quite far um, and, and working with that high current bipolar transistors that we are using. This one is a new type again. Um, and and um, refining the topology of pure class A because you know it's been around for years and years and years and it's what we've been doing since day one. Uh, so it's not a matter of making uh, groundbreaking technologies, new inventions, but it's a matter of getting things right and, and refining things that we already know and experiencing new stuff from that process. And then actually not saying to Tom and Michael, who's been doing the software design and uh, Soren, who's been doing all the mechanical parts and so on, not saying, okay, this is the time limit. You have to be done within 12 months. But saying, okay, you got to get this right. We will take the time to do it right. Um, because we know that this product will stay in production for, you know, 10 years, maybe 15 years, who knows? Um, because that's like the the, the history with Griffin that amplifiers, they stay in production for many, many years before they are replaced with an, a new one. Right. Um, it, you know, you, you need to reassure people that you are a safe bet. And when you are investing a lot of money into our products, that it is not being replaced with a new one two years later or whatever. You know, that wouldn't be fair to, to people. And, and saying that we could come up with something far better two years later, you know, that would be a lie. Um, because it's such a long process to get it done. Um, and and that, has been, that has been a huge achievement by Tom and the team at the R&D department. And it's just been a, you know, a joy following uh, their work. Uh, also, being able to bring, you know, input to the team because this is a teamwork. This is not just done by one man. 
this is a, a whole group of people we are gathering, we are sitting in meetings, we are listening, we are throwing in ideas. What about this way of doing decoupling? What about new damping materials? Um, like, you know, when we did the, the standard rack, uh, the furniture we have with the constrained layers of Kerog and so on, and then actually including that into the amplifiers. So, you know, the circuit boards, they are on constrained layers of, of Kerog and bitumen and stainless steel. Um, that's also very new to us. Um, so, yes, we have taken some of the technology that we know from other products that we've been doing um, and then combined them into, for us, this um, monster project. And, and, you know, we are all super, super proud of what we have achieved. Um, and like I said, it is, it is teamwork. Otherwise, it, it would never have been possible for us to, to, to make it. Well, you know, let's let's talk a little bit about the performance, uh, Rune. I really appreciate kind of that look inside the development, and it, it's really exciting when, uh, you know, Griffin as a company just takes the shackles off of going beyond what you've done before, and and not simply building to a price point or not needing a product to fit within a particular envelope or a particular slot within your product line. You know, when you just take everything, all of the constraints off, I think that's what's super exciting about this project for me. Uh, let's talk about the performance capability for a second, though, because, you know, if, if anyone's ever heard a Griffin amplifier, and, 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 and here's the thing, and this is something I want to make really, really clear because I've heard Griffin amplifiers for a long time, and we talk about, you know, power output and high power amplifiers and the Griffin amplifiers in terms of just the numbers. And if you look at the specs, well, you know, you can, you can buy an amplifier that's um, specification wise, far more powerful than the 210 Watts in the apex or the 150 Watts, uh, I believe, which is the Antillian Evo. But if yeah. you've ever actually heard a Griffin amplifier in your system, and I've heard many, they never run out of power. I've never once had a speaker in a room driven by a Griffin amplifier and I've run out of power or wished for more power output. In fact, I would say that Griffin power amplifiers sound more powerful, way more powerful than their output specifications would lead someone to believe. And believe it or not, you know, when you have a Griffin power amplifier that's, you know, 150 watts per channel in class A, and it sounds more powerful than a 600 watt per channel uh, amplifier from another manufacturer. You really get a true understanding of what Griffin Class A means and, and what it means in terms of the sound performance. And then, and then lastly, as, as far as performance, um, the Griffin performance uh, in my experience, it's not just about sounding powerful, it's what it actually does to the sound stage what it actually does to the frequency extremes. The bass, it's well documented. You know, if you've listened to a Griffin amplifier over a full range speaker, you know there's 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 no there's no equal in terms of bass reproduction compared to a Griffin amplifier. Um, but then with the Mephisto, I think you guys took that even further and you had speed and mm. and and just the, the 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 lightning fast transient response and then the sound stage was still massive it was like everything came together with the apex having heard the mephisto with the apex what can we expect in terms of griffin performance i've not heard it and you know no. the mind boggles in terms of thinking what this could be mean in terms of sound performance but what 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 can you tell us about what we should expect in terms of the performance of the Apex? Yes, um, it, it's very well described by you, Jeff, especially when you're talking about the bass and so on, you know, all the layers you have with it's it's just unbelievable. But in terms of the Apex, I think we have actually uh, we have also been looking back in time. Um, First of all, we have to, um, or 
I have to say that what we, when we are building a product, we are trying to be as sonic neutral as possible. We know that there is no such thing uh, to be 100% sonic neutral, but that's what we are aiming for. That's why you know we are still around, and that's why we hopefully is, will still be around 50 years from now. You know, trying to reach the perfect. However, uh, that will probably never happen. But we can try to pursue that, you know, or pursue that uh, goal. Um, what both Tom and I we've been discussing the sound qualities from the different amplifiers over the years. And, and I think there are a lot of people, they will probably agree with us that the, uh, the, the, the flow, the musicality, the speed from the Colosseum um, is, is still tremendous. Uh, the grip, uh, the, the control from the Mephisto, you know, you will not find it anywhere else. Um, the bass response from the Evo, the depth, the darkness, this black, black, you know, it's just pitch black when you're playing it. I think what, what you will hear when you, when you get to listen to the Apex, Jeff, you will uh, remember some of those uh, characters from the other amplifiers. Uh, you will remember the flow, the musicality, the transparency uh, from the Colosseum. You will have this extreme speed and control from the Mephisto, but at another level. Um, uh, and, and you will have this darkness and this way of playing bass from the Evo. Um, so it is like taking all the, 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 some of them current amplifiers, but also the older amplifiers like the Colosseum, putting them down into a melding pot, uh, adding a lot of new ingredients, and, and then see what comes out in the other end. Um, I think that's what you're going to experience with the Apex. You will experience, um, you, you will experience this, sound stage which is just phenomenal uh the headroom is it's just unbelievable um and 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 again the speed uh the neutrality from it uh, for me it's it is it is mind-blowing and when you're used to listen to mephisto uh, and you think it's probably one of the best amplifiers in the world and then you play them, them just right against an apex. You're just like, whoa, what happened? Uh, is it really that possible to take it to that whole new level? Um, but I think we have achieved that. And I think that when people, they get to listen to it, and, and most likely a lot of the, the existing Mephisto clients, they, would, they will you know, buy into to, to the Apex to take it to another level. They will agree with me that this is just a, a whole different story. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's um, this is, um, again, to m make comparisons to uh, the race car industry, to the Formula One and so on that every year, you know, they are adding a little bit more. They get to know a little bit more. They're investigating even more and more and more. Uh, it costs a lot of money to go, you know, into to the details and to, to position you as a company and product-wise and brand-wise to be among the finest brands in the world. Um, and I think we... Um, that with the Apex and with the Commander, that we have taken that step, extra step. Um, not that we haven't been there for a long time, because we have, I think, personally. Uh, but 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 this is just a, it's just another ball game, completely. Uh, and, well, and what like, what is it? Like what is said, uh, Sorry, uh, like you said, that it has not been about 
designing or manufacturing a product to fit into a price point mm. or to beat our competitors in terms of price or weight or uh, in terms of uh, specs or whatever. For us, it has just been a matter of designing the best possible products that we are capable of doing and then not allowing, you know, cost or whatever, you know, to, to, to create a certain boundary around that. Just saying, okay, let's, let's go for it. Let's, let's see how far we can take it. And then what it's going to cost, it's going to cost this or that. Uh, but it has not been a matter of saying, oh, it's going to cost 100,000 uh, euros or 200,000 euros or whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know. Well, I think one of the most exciting things about what you just described, Rune, is that, you know, for all of us that have listened to Griffin amplifiers for, for years and years, and we all have our favorites for sure. But I think, you know, one of the experiences that, that, that I can relate of listening to all the Griffin amplifiers is that when you're listening to one, and it doesn't matter whether it's an Antillian of whatever vintage or a Coliseum, you don't feel like you're missing anything, but there are certainly strengths to each product. Yes. And to try to incorporate all of the strengths from all of the older products into one and then take it up another level or two above that, that that's, that's super, super exciting to me because what you're basically saying is we're, we're, we're not going to experience a, a departure in terms of Griffin Sound. We're going to really experience all the best parts of Griffin Sound and then taken to another level. And so mm. that's that's super exciting to me. And I would imagine also to all your Griffin customers, uh, loyal Griffin customers through the years that have loved these amplifiers uh, and, 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 and have, their, have their favorites and have their favorite sonic attributes. And for you guys to make sure that all of that is in this this product, the Apex, I think is one of the things that's, you know, from what you said, it's 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 super exciting to me to have all of those things in one product. I just I can't imagine how that's gonna sound. It's 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 just a, it's just great. And it's just great fun being a part of, you know, that you can actually work in in a company where you are capable of manufacturing designing some of the best products on earth um and you you're actually getting paid you know to, to do that <laughs> uh, it, it it is a certain <clears throat> you you will have to treat that with a kind of humbleness and and great appreciation you know because such a chance doesn't come you know that often um uh, and it's it's just it's just very very cool um, in terms of, of the release of the new products, I also think that the preamplifier, the, the commander, uh, requires a lot of attention. Um, it's, it's, it's just a gem. It's, it's remarkable good. Uh, the, the, the signal noise ratio is 50 times lower than a, than a Pandora, um, which is, you know, which is that silent you know, already, but this, with this one, um, I think it's, it's just a whole different story. Um, it's, it's such a cool, cool preamplifier. It's massive. It's huge. It has the same size as like two essence power amplifiers. Okay. So it, it's, it's a big preamp, uh, for sure. Um, well, you know, Rune, I'm I'm so excited, and and thank you for this insight. Look, tell us what what customers can expect in terms of in terms of production. Are are the amplifiers and the preamplifier are they going into production uh, soon? Uh, if someone were to uh, pull the trigger and and upgrade their Mephisto yeah. and uh, their Pandora, uh, what what could they expect in terms of uh, Griffin production? with yeah. the new product uh, when we're talking pandora and mephisto they will stay in production they are still super super attractive products and uh, still very current and and very great great products and and um but uh mephisto uh, apex and commander 
as we speak, uh, they are in production. Uh, they started the actual production today. Um, and so we expect to, to ship uh, around the world within one month. Um, so, so now they are just busy at the factory manufacturing uh, lots of Apex and lots of uh, commanders <laughs> for, for the hungry audiophiles. Um, yeah, I would imagine just moving those around the factory to the various production uh, stages uh, is 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 quite is quite a chore. <laughs> just just manufacturing alone products like this are, yeah, they uh, are just difficult. Had to, they had to make a whole new production line, um, you know, with uh, with uh, with tools and stuff like that to lift the products and. Uh, you know, when you're having heat sinks uh, weighing uh, more than 50 kilos each and so on, you know, so it requires um, a whole different way, a whole different setup of handling uh, the manufacturing. And there will always be two persons working on one amplifier, uh, otherwise it's impossible. Uh, okay. But what is actually cool is that you can take the uh, apex you can take it out of the box single-handed one guy can do that um and and slide it on to the 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 amp stand that we also manufacture the standard amp stand made for for the uh, the big apex so you can actually take it out of the box so if it gets into the room you can get it out of the box by yourself well with, that's, with that's, zero that's, that's, that's it's zero stress well, that's good to hear. And, and just so all of our soundstage readers and, and soundstage YouTube channel uh, viewers know, uh, an Apex stereo amplifier is going to be making its way uh, to North Carolina so that I can uh, hear and write about it. And I, I can't tell you how utterly excited I am about the proposition of, of hearing this. It's, it's, it's going to be an amazing experience, although I will have some help. Uh, when yeah. it comes to setting it up, uh, but 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 I want to thank you, Rune, and and also you know I want to mention you know at the end here, uh, thanks to Fleming uh, for for years of friendship and and the industrial design uh, of these products, and he's really uh, knocked it out of the park with the Apex, and then uh, Tom with the uh, electrical uh, engineering uh, of the products. You know, you guys have assembled a tremendous team. Uh, there at Griffin, and then obviously with with yourself, uh, telling us about these products and and just sharing the knowledge uh, and what's special about Griffin to everyone around the world. I really appreciate uh, your time and and your enthusiasm about the products. It, it's it's infectious. Uh, you know, I'm very enthusiastic about this, and I just want to thank uh, you know the entire Griffin team uh, for for letting us have an inside look into these new products. And I wish you at the absolute best uh, in launching these around the world. You're very welcome, Jeff. And, and also thank you to you and the team. And if I may uh, say thank you to, to all the loyal Griffin fans out there. You know, it's, it's been a, a tough couple of years uh, not being able to tra travel the world and shake hands and so on. Uh, but but the Griffin fans out there, they have been tremendously, you know, loyal to us, uh, our distributors and dealers, you know, the way that they have su supporting us, uh, the, the whole industry, uh, the press and so on. Um, and in fact, that yeah, we, we have never been bigger uh, than we are right now. Um, and, and I think we can thank people out there, you know, the end users, for really standing behind the brand and supporting it. Um, it is, it's, it's a special culture and, and I'm just proud being just a tiny part of that. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Well, thanks again, Rune. And just, just so everybody knows, I don't want to forget this. There, at the time that this video launches, there's an article on soundstageglobal.com that will have more images uh, of the Apex and the Commander. So please head over there. Uh, to 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 see those and to read that article and there will be a lot more coming on these products in the pages of soundstage and uh, 
Rune, I guess that wraps it up for today. Thank you so much again. And uh, happy, happy, happy Friday. Happy launch day. And the same to you. And the same to you, Jeff. Thank you very much. Say hi to everyone and to your family. All right. Bye-bye.